I'll call the uh, St. Paul Metropolitan Transit Commission Board uh, to order Tuesday, uh, December 18th at 4 p.m. Uh, let the record reflect that um, all members are present except from, uh, with the exception of Sartell. Ryan uh, is not, and um, otherwise, uh, is there any addition or changes to the agenda? No. Okay. Is there a motion to approve it? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, discussion? Seeing none. All those <coughs> in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, consent agenda items 5 through 8. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a, a second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we come to the point of the meeting where we have the open forum. I see on our list, uh, Kim. Okay, um, I want to talk about pedestrian safety. Um, I have been talking about pedestrian safety for a long time to many different people. And um, I'm not a pedestrian. I gave that up years ago. It was too dangerous for me. Um, we now have people dying on our streets and our areas and cities. <coughs> and towns has been a particularly bad year. This affects every person, especially the disabled and the elderly, who may not be as fast to turn to see clearly or get out of harm's way. Um, it was recommended to me that I read this really good book about transit. It's called Human Transit, Rec recommended to me by planners. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize, in order to take most transit, you have to be a pedestrian. Not so much a paratransit, but a lot of times people here want to increase the ridership numbers. One of the ways to get ridership up on fixed route buses is to really think about pedestrian safety um, and also to make it easier for people to ride the bus. So there's a whole lot of people and organizations saying pedestrian safety is not my responsibility. There's a lot of finger pointing. It's not me, it's them. It seems like everybody thinks it's not their job. And so meanwhile, people are dying. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm just advocating that we all take this issue seriously and make it a serious effort to fix it. If you don't care about the people themselves, <laughs> it just makes pure economic sense because having more safety for the pedestrians will drive up ridership. So there's a uh, meeting in January, um, APO hosts it, the Bike and Pedestrian Safety <coughs> Committee, and I'd like to see all the commissioners there if possible and as many people in this room there as possible because Pedestrian safety has got to be a joint effort. And in your own cities, I ask you to do whatever you can to really <laughs> work on this because I don't want to see any more people killed. Thanks. No, I appreciate that, uh, Kim, and that point. Um, I think it's, uh, uh, we lose sight, uh, I think, of that. I, I can tell you um, we just had a person crossing um, a f a first. Uh, street on Fifth Avenue uh, was killed um, crossing an elderly individual. My godmother was killed there in the 80s uh, making the <coughs> same journey across there when Empire bu Building was uh, was all senior housing at that time. And so um, so it's always it's always been a, an issue. In fact, I own a driver's education business. We teach more about pedestrian safety than we really do about the driving piece and not only telling the kids about how to be a good pedestrian, and, and but also as a, as a driver. So I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I know uh, safety is part of the training that Metrobus does in those aspects. Um, in fact, I know we've had some discussion on, on, on places for to put a stop, a bus stop. And we've, we've, in fact, one business wants it. And because there's no pedestrian access, um, we've always said no. Um, because to get to it would require um, pedestrians to be in a, in a busy road without sidewalk access. Um, so I agree with you 100%. So uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I speak for myself, but I know that would be the other priorities in, in the other <coughs> cities. I think we've all had those situations. You had a, a prominent citizen yeah. that we all, Andy Verdon, who, you know, um, rest his soul too, who died um, crossing a, a street. So it's a very 
appreciative of uh, you bringing that up and, and uh, to focus on that. So appreciate that, Kim. Any other um, <coughs> items in the from, from the public currently yeah. have? <coughs> um, if not, then we'll, we'll move on to uh, general business, item number nine, uh, our presentation of our, our preliminary audit. Wonderful. Which we always look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> we do? Oh, the audit is early. I know how to clear a room usually. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it is a pleasure to be here tonight, Mr. Mayor, and members of the board and management. Uh, I'm Steve Wishman with Bergen KDB. Uh, we're your auditors of uh, the uh, St. Cloud Metropolitan Transit Commission. I have a brief presentation up on the slide <clears throat> on the uh, screen here. I also handed out uh, some slides for you as well in front of you. So uh, my goal today is just to give you a brief uh, kind of a snapshot of where the year, the financial uh, report, and talk about some of the audit compliance and things. And I think you'll find everything to be very much in order. Uh, good solid results this year. Had a lot of uh, some, some federal funds pulled through this year, which is uh, a little bit higher than normal. Um, but again, I um, want to just walk you through that, <coughs> just a half a dozen or slides or so. So again, our goal as auditors is to provide an opinion on your financial statements. Uh, uh, talks about what management's responsibility is and what our auditor's responsibility is. Uh, Paula and team um, <coughs> basically do the uh, oh, thank you. do the day-to-day um, -day capturing of the transactions and then we basically audit that information. Uh, our, so we do a variety of tests uh, with the federal and state and local funds. And uh, we're again are uh, projecting to issue an unmodified or clean, clean opinion on the financial statements. It's pages two, three, and four of the, the final book. That'll be uh, forthcoming after we get our final piece of information. I'll talk about that in just a moment. So uh, in, in addition to that, we were required to uh, test in, in accordance with federal requirements the, um, <clears throat> some Minnesota legal compliance from the state standpoint. The, uh, from a federal standpoint, the um, government auditing standards and the, uh, the, the single audit act uh, for the transit funds that flowed through for the bus buses that were received and, and purchased. And again, nothing to report there as far as compliance issues. Uh, just two internal control items that, we, that we've talked about before, uh, the segregation of duties just due to a limited staff that you have uh, at the uh, MTC. Um, again, we're not <coughs> recommending you change anything. It is a repeat comment. Just realize there are those inherent limitations uh, for the internal controls that, of the organization. But uh, all the testing we did, everything checked out, uh, everything is in the right spot for the right amounts, so have good, good solid controls. They're just not perfect, and, and for them to be perfect would take an investment in uh, several uh, full-time people uh, to del segregate all those particular duties, and you just elected to not to do that, kind of balance that, that risk. So again, we're not, not recommending you change anything there. Uh, there was one comment that we had just relating to some, some of the federal contact, contracts and procurement policies. That has been resolved by a new policy that you've implemented and that was uh, kind of a coordinated effort with, with us and, and another uh, uh, audit that you had as well. So just to let you know, kind of just some housekeeping type things on the procurement policy. It has been or will be shortly, will be implemented. So um, that's basically been corrected. No findings on Minnesota legal, legal compliance. That is a compliance guide that we uh, have to follow that the state auditor's office provides all the CPA firms, uh, making sure you're adequately collateralized, follow proper bid and quote procedures and a variety of others. And again, nothing to report there as well. <clears throat> and then the financial analysis and required communication is also part of that. Nothing out of the ordinary there as far as required <coughs> communication. We received full cooperation of uh, Ryan, Paula, and team. Uh, no, no disagreements, uh, nothing like that. So again, uh, that all checked out very, very nicely. The financial analysis is the, uh, the uh, part now that I will uh, kind of walk through uh, very briefly. So again, uh, the, I was going to mention why we're showing preliminary information. We are waiting for one piece of information for the Public Employees Retirement Association, the PERA. Uh, we are required to implement that or include that in your audit uh, within one year of the measurement date. Uh, the June 30, 2017, or 18, excuse me, uh, data is being audited, currently audited by the, the state auditors. And once that information is received, we will <coughs> capture that in your uh, financial statements and then finalize the audit book, just like last year. What that doesn't really change, though, is kind of the, the overall operational revenues and expenditures. So, so really what I'm telling you today will be very, very consistent with the final document. Uh, we'll just have to adjust that, that unfunded pension liability uh, on the, uh, the high-end statements uh, before we uh, issue our final report. Um, 
just a, a quick snapshot of the inventory balance. As you can see over the five years, you're kind of about in the middle of the range there of the inventory balance. This is the non-diesel inventory. And it's just a gauge of kind of the efficiency of your operations uh, as far as what levels of inventories are there. And with the, uh, the CNG and the, the variety of buses you have, we would expect that to, to grow um, you know, incrementally. And as you see, since 2016, it has grown uh, just a little bit. But again, kind of about in that middle of the range from a low of 120,000 to a high of 177,000. So, not a significant amount, but again, just wanted to uh, again show you that that particular trend analysis. This really summarizes the uh, the operating uh, revenues uh, by source for the uh, transit commission. And as you can see, a the vast majority of your your revenues are generated by state grants and aids, which is the green bar in the middle. <coughs> The biggest change this year is up above that, which is the federal grants, and you did receive almost uh, about two and a half million dollars for some bus purchases. So that's uh, uh, significantly higher than you've seen in the past years. Your uh, transit fares, the passenger fares, which is the second from the top, uh, $1,557,180, pretty much the same as it has been in prior years. Your tax levy, com in comparison, uh, is very close in total. The, um, the operational levy was a little bit lower and the uh, fixed asset <coughs> allocation was just a little bit higher, but in total the tax levy was very, very consistent with prior years. So again, what that means is your, your, the taxpayer's money is very, very consistent uh, at the local level. Uh, you do see obviously the majority of it is in the state aids uh, number, which is actually down a little bit from last year. That's down about $700,000 just to do some of the shifting between uh, federal and state funds for uh, for fiscal 2018. So again, total revenues $16.3 million. That compares to about $14.5 million in 2017. So about a $1.8 million increase in your revenues by uh, uh, for uh, 2018. Most of that, as I mentioned, is just due to the capital, uh, federal capital and uh, operating grants that you received. So again, uh, just taking a look at total revenues and expenses, uh, again, that would be including uh, all funds, all accounts, both short-term and long-term, $22,237,522 of revenues and $16,187,392 of expenses. So again, about a $6 million surplus, if you want to say. And again, uh, the, the major reason for that, again, is the capital grants that you received as well as just some of the surplus operations that you had in the general fund, which we'll uh, talk about as well. So um, about a $2 million operating income in, in the uh, op operational portion, if you want to say, plus three or three and a half million dollars of, of grant funding, both uh, <coughs> federal and state. And that again does include depreciation expense uh, on the buses and, and your transit uh, systems that, uh, that we have captured as capital assets as well. So again, the, the, the main point is that revenues have exceeded expenditures. If you look at the, the last five years, that's been consistent across the board that revenues have exceeded expenditures and capital <coughs> grants. Uh, but again, uh, much uh, larger um, variance, if you want to say, or much more of a surplus in fiscal 2018. And again, that's due to the, uh, the federal uh, grants that you receive for your bus purchases. This really, in my opinion, shows kind of really how the financial health of the organization uh, has, has matured over the last five years. And there's, there's uh, four different columns here. The, uh, the bottom one is your unassigned net position balance. That did increase by about $1.6 million. So that is really the, the overall surplus, if you want to say, from an operational perspective, when you kind of strip out the, the capital and the, and the, and the uh, equipment. Um, activity. The second one is your unrestricted cash balance, and again, that went up uh, about $2 million. So again, very consistent increase between your unassigned net position and your cash position. That is the unrestricted cash of $11.4 million. Kind of look back five years ago, you were just over $5 million, so you can see the continued financial success of, uh, of the organization. The uh, third one, the little lighter purple, if you want to say, is the, uh, the net investment in capital assets. And really what that shows is what components of your financial equity, if you want to say, is reinvested in, in your uh, equipment and your, your buses. And again, that went up from $20.8 million up to $24.8 million, so about a $4 million increase due to both federal, state, and local uh, purchases of, of equipment, uh, mostly buses, 
And again, a majority of that was related to the federal uh, entitlements that you received this year. And then the very top is just your total net position. So if you pull it all together, how well did we do this year compared to last year? Are we growing as a uh, company? And again, your overall equity or net position went from 27.023 million up to 33.03 million dollars. So again, a very nice increase. And the top bar, again, as you see, it kind of was dipping back in 2015 and 16. You now kind of resume with the investment and the, uh, the capital of federal and state grants to increase your net position uh, up to 33.1 million, roughly, which is the highest of the five years that are that is presented. Another uh, uh, accumulated earnings. This is again a, a kind of a, a, a carve out of the, the equity of the DMTC for ass assignments of some of your fund balances. And overall, there was an increase of about three hundred and forty-one thousand dollars for the various assignments. These just this just earmarks some of these certain dollar amounts for, for a variety of things. And the one I want to point out is here the third one from the bottom is that early bond payoff. So you are accumulating resources. Um, in addition to uh, the, the earnings, if you want to say, to pay off your bonds early, you do have 430000 uh, in that particular assignment at this point. And again, that, dis that basically doubled from last year. Um, so you continue to add to that for, for future uh, early bond payoff. And obviously, that will uh, reduce the interest expense that you will pay uh, in the, the long term, uh, which will <coughs> invest in the organization. And then the future capital repairs that did increase by fifty-five thousand as well. Kind of the new one you started last year, so it did go from fifty-five thousand to one hundred and ten thousand. So again, all the other ones fairly consistent. Some are up a little bit, some are down a little bit. Again, uh, very very consistent over the uh, the last year. Again, uh, as I mentioned a couple times already, the reason your equity or net position has increased is due to the capital nature of the funding, federal and state, and you did have about six point three million dollars just under that in uh, buses and uh, related uh, infrastructure. And again, very much about double what it was last year. Uh, 2015 and 16 were very um, slower years, if you want to say. And then back in 14, you had a very large bus fleet uh, that was uh, uh, received as far as capital, and that was about 18.6 million. So kind of on the rebound again, if you want to say, uh, for as far as capital expenditures and reinvestment is what we would call that. And then again, very quickly, the uh, operating revenues by source compared to 2018 and 2017. The, the major difference here is the federal grants on the left-hand side. That's about 14% of the operating revenues. Um, last, in, and last year's, there was really no, no federal uh, grants. So as a result of the, the uh, 2018 piece uh, growing to 14.1%, uh, every other component actually shrunk just a little bit with the exception of uh, the, the tax levy for fixed assets, which stayed very consistent, but that's why you see the state grants going down uh, because the federal grants went up. Passenger fares, as I mentioned, were very, very consistent as a dollar amount, but it did drop about a percentage point just because of the federal grants that we received in, in the uh, fund. And then finally, the expenses to show, okay, for every dollar we spend, uh, what percentage goes to um, the fixed route, dial ride, which is for maintenance, general administration, et cetera. And again, um, you see the fixed route is down by about three percentage points from 63.7 down to 60.7. General administration actually went up from 15.6 to 18.2. And again, there was some full-time equivalent positions that were added uh, in, uh, for fiscal 18, and that was the, the, the major driver. Obviously, they were budgeted for. Uh, you remained uh, very cognizant of the budget and, and uh, met those uh, uh, parameters. So again, and vehicle maintenance uh, did go up just a little bit from about 16.1% uh, to 16.5%. Um, so with that, I'll just close and say I, I would uh, summarize this as a very successful year for, for the uh, Transit Commission and uh, a lot of capital investment. And uh, again, we will conclude the, uh, the audit once we have the final pieces from the Public Employee Retirement Association. We expect that in about six weeks to two months and then we just will push that through we'll get the final documents paula and ryan and team will, will uh, verify that the uh, the amounts are uh, correct we'll get everything updated and have, have a final document to you which uh, i think you just will uh, forward on when that's available so uh, i'll just close and say thanks for your time i'm uh, happy to answer any questions you may have or any, if you want me to clarify anything uh, i'd be happy to do so at this time any questions or comments
Okay, thanks. Steve, appreciate that. Thank you. Um, we'll move on then to item number 10, consideration of uh, ADA transition plan for 2018. All right, uh, commissioners. 2019. Oh, commissioners. Uh, the Metro Bus Planning Department would work with the East and Cloud APO to create uh, the Metro Bus uh, ADA transition plan. Uh, this is a federally mandated plan to all jurisdictions, so each of your jurisdictions also completed one of these. Um, it had a very specific scope, and it was a compliance document, and the compliance was tied to our federal funding for our transit network. Um, this It's part of a nationwide effort to kind of standardize uh, ADA transition planning across the entire country so that we're all kind of moving towards that same goal. Um, Public input was gathered on this plan. It was the standard 30-day co uh, common period for Metro Bus's public participation policies, um, which received a lot of public input. Um, one of the issues that came up was the input on snow removal. Though this isn't really relevant to the plan, the overwhelming uh, uh, amount that we received kind of uh, has led to the acknowledgement that Metro Bus needs to create some sort of published public policy on snow removal. Um, one of the other issues was uh, fixed rope ac access to this facility on Franklin Avenue here. Um, we do sit about a half a mile from Route 6 and 7 on St. Germain Street and about a third of a mile from Route 21 and 22 on Benton Drive, but uh, there is a lack of pedestrian infrastructure. Um, should a uh, project be scheduled by either St. Cloud or Sock Rapids on Franklin Avenue. It would be the Metro Bus Planning Department recommendation that we include some pedestrian infrastructure on at least one side of the road. Um, uh, as far as providing fixed route service, currently Franklin Avenue lacks the density and destinations to merit a fixed route. Um, the final uh, rec uh, public input was uh, comments about pedestrian safety. Um, Metrobus remains committed to the safety of its riders both on and off the bus. Um, we continue to work with the community development departments and engineering departments of the cities to try to accomplish uh, safer routes for our riders. Um, your city staffs have been very welcoming of Metrobus input so far. Um, and Metrobus will continue to make recommendations for pedestrian state, uh, safety on infrastructure adjacent to our roads when uh, capital improvement projects are planned on those roadways. Um, the planned goal is to maintain the ADA compliance of our facilities and our rolling revenue stock and to enhance access to transit, the, the transit stop network in the Metro Bus. Uh, service area by identifying barriers and then working with your jurisdictions that own and maintain the infrastructure to try to remove those barriers. Um, the strategy set forth by the plan is to do just that, is to work with the member jurisdictions um, to include transit enhancements whenever CIP projects are scheduled and planned on the roads served by Metrobus. Uh, current uh, CIP projects were outlined and mapped for Metrobus by the area planning organization and included in the plan. Uh, they also mapped our routes with those projects so that we can see where upcoming projects now through 2024 are located on our routes. Um, often budget is the constraint here, both on the municipal side and the Metrobus side. We have a very limited budget for stop enhancements but we could uh, maximize the use of our limited budget by uh, adding our projects into your projects. So that's the strategy that we're kind of working with. If you're going out to fix a roadway and you already have all the contractors out there, adding transit enhancements becomes a lower cost uh, initiative. We would also work with the county and state when they're doing projects in our service area on their roadways. <coughs> the implementation timeline is as Metrobus and your municipal project budgets allow and as municipal roadway projects are planned and constructed. So our uh, requested action today is that all research planning and public input being considered, Metrobus planning staff believes that this is a sound plan meeting the scope and goals outlined by the FTA. 
The plan strategy will allow us to maximize our limited budget to enhance transit service for all riders. And we are asking for your approval of the tra ADA transition plan. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. <coughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion carries. Adopted. Um, item number 11 consideration of uh, personnel policy. Good afternoon. <coughs> um, there are two chapters for personnel policies in your board packet. Uh, one is Chapter 14, Employee Education and Development. Uh, the primary information in this particular chapter at this time is related to our on-site training. Um, we do have the intent to develop a, another section to this training. We're writing off-site, but we're still working some of the details out on that. So right now we're just bringing the on-site training um, piece uh, to you for approval. Chapter 15, Safety and Wellness, covers a variety of different safety and wellness topic areas, um, including things such as personal protective equipment, um, emergency preparedness, the different types of meetings that we conduct on a regular basis, um, tobacco-free policy, workplace violence, um, and then we also have our workers' compensation insurance um, policy as part of the safety and wellness chapter as well. That policy does include a return to work program or a light duty program, which we do in the policy indicate we reserve our light duty work for our work comp um, employees because we just don't have a lot of it. And so whatever light duty work we have, we do want to be able to offer to um, work comp employees so that we can keep them working. Um, do you have any questions? No questions. All right. Thank you. Uh, Motion to approve. Second. Move and second <coughs> it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Carries. Thank you. Uh, resolution uh, item number twelve. Resolution twenty-eight dash fourteen. Transit facility feasibility study. Yeah, commissioners. Uh, just to uh, briefly summarize the the. Uh, requirement for this project was Metro bus is currently maxed out on, on its footprint here at the operation center for all of its facilities uh, we do have a piece of land the, the Z bar property that we purchased uh, a couple of years ago that we had uh, made an agreement with the FTA that we would develop that property for at least seven years after acquisition and so um, our downtown transit hub is totally maxed out down there we had no space to grow within the facility but also in the surrounding area as well and uh, we're fine right now at our mobility training center although we have transitioned some staff uh, at that location as well <coughs> due to some spatial needs or lack thereof here at uh, our operations center uh, so we published an RFP um, we put together a project team which consisted of myself Paul Masty Doug and Doug Dietrichson and uh, we had a uh, uh, evaluation team of, of us three plus Ryan Daniel. Uh, we received three proposals from three very qualified uh, consultants to work with us on this project. And uh, we, after a lot of deliberation, it was very close, uh, we decided that we wanted to award this to SRF Consulting. Uh, they, we felt that they responded the most clearly to all the requirements and the scope of the project. And they've had a history of working with Metro Bus and the, and the APO and the City of St. Cloud in the past as well. Um, so we, we feel good about their ability to, to come up with uh, a real positive and, and uh, workable plan for us. Uh, we're looking at, you know, we didn't really decide yet, you know, how many years down the road. We're initially looking at maybe 5, 15, 20, somewhere in that range. Um, but uh, I guess uh, we just like to uh, start beginning uh, contract uh, discussions with them and we are looking for approval from you to proceed with those. Any questions? What's the what's the whole scope? Just um, well, what we're looking at is space or? yeah. What we want and we want to focus primarily can how best can we utilize our, our current space? You know, here at the operations center and then at the other two facilities. Uh, part of the scope was to focus on okay, what type of condition are these facilities in? Can we you know do uh, additional expansion here by some adjacent land purchase or can we? 
ex somehow expand our facility here to accommodate space a little bit better. Um, if, if the answer is no, then we want to look at other possible uh, relocation options. Um, you know, ideally, it'd be nice to have one transit campus somewhere here in, in the city, uh, in the city limits. Um, but if that's not possible, maybe a separate transit hub or maybe a relocation of our downtown transit hub altogether. Um, you know, what 20 years down the road, a mobility training center, how will we outgrow that facility? You know, can we continue to exist where it currently resides, which you know, our opportunities for expansion there are going to be very limited as well. Um, so initially we want to focus on how can we best utilize what we currently have, and then if not, you know, what are the options? What are the options for other land acquisition or, or relocation? As Doug, you know, correctly mentioned or referenced uh, at, during some of our discussions, you know, all of the, the growth is moving out to the west, southwest. It's moving away from us here on the east side. Uh, the ideal uh, part of this location is, is the, the fact that we don't have any uh, transit issues here. Um, you know, we, our buses can you know, enter and exit the facility without any impediment. We're not going into any major traffic situations, things like that. Well, and we know there's other properties that you know, are going to be opening up, potential sale, some you know, in and around the city, but you know, what, what are the traffic impacts going to be? What are the environmental impacts going to be? So we know what we have here, um, but if we can't sustain our, you know, our current uh, or our future growth, then we want to know what, what are our options. And, uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, one of the areas that I, I hear often and, um, is just the whole subject of with the, the transfer station downtown and the other potential and what that could be. And and I you know and I you know we we put a lot in St. Cloud anyway. I can speak for us. Put a lot of focus and I and, you know this would be something that Sacrafts would appreciate. You know um, if we ever you know if we ever for example had North Star. Um, so I'm glad this was a larger scope, but what would happen if you if you looked at some aspects of transit and, and North Star and how that would be in East Side? You know, we're really pushing East Side, we're just um, which is a benefit to both, you know St. Cloud mm -hmm. and Sac Rapids, obviously. And got to slow some of that Western Wade Park. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> All I want to know is, do you pay taxes? Because if you don't, we don't want you. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the deal. That's what I'm trying to get over. Stop grabbing. Put the transit center over. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, I, I'm glad you're. That's part of the scope uh, because um, that's what I'm hearing. Real. Just, just yesterday, actually, just somebody on that whole downtown piece, and and there, you know, those are always pieces that. You know, you've, you've had to get moved a few times when there's construction in that area, and that's a, that's a high development piece. But, but I know, you know, obviously the university is a big part of that. So yeah, east side or university. Yeah, no, we, we've be. seen a lot. We've seen a real decrease of our ridership down at the San yeah, yeah. University, and we've talked about that internally. You know, we really need to look at some other avenues What's or sources to to increase our ridership. You know, apartment buildings are popping up all over the place, particularly in the Sartell area. And but all that growth is to the west of, of the city proper. So um, although, you know, there have been some apartments going up here, here as well, but that seems to be the next next big. Are you when you when you do a study like this? Do you do you reach out to our our, our uh, planning directors and so you look we at our be, yes. comp plans and correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. yeah, we didn't, uh, and and I'll talk about that in my procurement update. Um, but we haven't really identified um, other partners in this venture yet. But the APO will certainly be a part of that. And, downtown development or excuse me St. Cloud development department as well. So. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. So when does when is so your your pick selected? Now when when is this So with your guys' plan? approval with your with your approval then we can go ahead with contract negotiations. The grant that we currently have to pay for this ends uh, June thirtieth. So right now we put a deadline on SRF that everything has to be hundred percent complete by June thirtieth. Mm -hmm. If we That's need good. to extend that grant, we can, but hopefully we won't. I mean, we don't want it to be a 18-month project either. You know, we want to kind of wrap it up so we've got the the answer. So we're shooting for June 30th. If we need to extend it, we can do that. But hopefully are, you, are you doing as part of this some public input sessions? Do they do some of that? Or uh, we haven't discussed that. Yeah, we haven't gotten. I just encourage if you do, <laughs> it'd be helpful yeah. for. I mean, there's I know a lot of folks that look at development. Um, and then focus on you know where transit is and 
that may end up being a phase two of this project. Okay. So, yeah. depending on whether they, the rec if the recommendation comes back that you know our we'd be better served to relocate, you know, in 10, 20 years, then, then yeah, definitely we'll have to have those type of conversations. Okay. Yeah. But if it comes back to say, yep, this is your best location and these are the things you should do, well, then it's not, you know, it's not as important to do so. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's Keep in mind too that this is also 100% financed by MnDOT. Oh yeah, that was the that was the that was the selling point. That's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I, I think the other well, we got eleven thousand. That goes to the commission, doesn't it? Oh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Oh, we park. Yeah, we park. Move to approve resolution twenty eighteen dash fourteen. Second. Move and second. Okay. Further discussion. Seeing that, and all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, resolution is adopted. Item number 13, consideration of uh, uh, past sales and outlet policy. Good afternoon. Uh, we are working on our policies and procedures for the um, resources that we provide down at the Mobility Training Center. So we presented our, I believe, four um, policies that we would like you to review and, and um, approve. The first is the past sale and schedule outlet policy. We um, have our, our schedules and our um, information about our services throughout the community. We have 30 to 40 sites that are updated regularly to keep our schedules updated, um, our travel training data ride, that um, link information, so forth. And then our past sales sites are at the Coburns, Cashwise, Byerly's, um, the hospital in St. Ben's and then the transit center where people can purchase our passes um, and also online. We um, also administer the reduced fare freedom card down in our facility. So if an individual has a disability that prevents them from driving a vehicle, they can apply or present um, identification of their disability which entitles them to ride at a reduced fare during our off-peak times here at Metro Bus. So they can um, produce a, a Medicare card with the red and the blue stripe. That would qualify them, a Minnesota driver's license um, indicating the disability, and also over the age of 65. Um, if somebody doesn't have those documents on them, they can complete an application, and that application needs to be signed by a healthcare pro professional and then that card is issued. We also have our policies on our, our dial ride eligibility in the packet and also um, our community outreach and travel training program. Any questions on any of them? Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Policy is adopted. Uh, consideration item number 14, consideration of dial ride eligibility policy. And that, <coughs> yeah, that was part of the four that we, we went through. So 13 to 16, you could make more. Oh, you did all one motion? Yeah, we did it all. That is what we did. <laughs> <laughs> we got it all. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> okay, so uh, department updates then. Well, let's get right on down to number 17. Uh, you get to listen to me again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, to tag on to our feasibility study uh, discussion, um, we're, we're currently in the information gathering stage. So uh, SRF has requested an, uh, quite a bit of information from Metrobus, uh, blueprints, drawings, maps, um, you know, any type of ridership data, GIS mapping, things like that. So I know Doug's working on a lot of that information. We have a meeting, uh, internal staff meeting scheduled for January 3rd. And we want to discuss or kind of brainstorm, you know, what do we see for growth for Metro Bus in the next five to 15 years? They want to know, you know, how, is, how do we anticipate our ridership increasing, uh, staffing, uh, equipment, buses, things like that. Um, so we're going to meet, kind of brainstorm, and then come up with some, some brief, uh, uh, excuse me, compartmentalized information and send that off to them. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, uh, we have a kickoff meeting scheduled with SRF uh, the week of January 21st, tentatively. 
that week, and then we'll discuss the data that was collected and then we'll put together a project plan on how we want to approach the entire project. And hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, stay on schedule as well. We've got a, a project schedule laid out, which um, if it's followed, we, we should be able to make that June 30th deadline if everything goes as, as planned. So a um, little bit of bus fleet in updates. Uh, we're still working on finalizing the specs for our, uh, we have five Arbach uh, low floor CNG buses that we're finalizing specs on. Uh, the first bus is scheduled for line entry on January 15th the delivery date of March 22nd. Uh, the very last two of those five are scheduled for delivery on uh, April 19th of next year. Uh, we've run in some, quite a few 11th hour changes in, in the bus spec. Uh, um, you know, every bus manufacturer has their standard bus that they want to build. Uh, we have some <coughs> different features and, and designs that we, you know, we want to see that helps our dollaride uh, passengers and drivers uh, perform better service. So. Uh, they've been very cooperative, very accommodating for us, but it's taken a lot of conversation in, uh, between us and the, their engineering department to make some of this happen. So uh, we feel pretty positive that we're moving in the right direction there. Uh, MCI, we have uh, two commuter coaches that are near completion. Actually, they should be completed this week. Uh, Ed was out at the plant last week. Uh, he did some inspections, kind of followed the production process. And uh, he put together a list of some items that he wanted to make sure that were addressed before delivery was made of the, of the buses. And uh, they're scheduled, tentatively scheduled for delivery uh, next week, uh, the 27th. Uh, new flyer, uh, we have uh, three buses that were delivered, uh, three 35-foot CNG buses. Uh, field service inspections are ongoing as we speak. Um, the buses will be commissioned for service and uh, subsequently we'll be retiring three, our 340 foot <coughs> diesel buses that were running primarily on campus. And uh, that's uh, kind of an interesting thing. I mean, because they ran primarily on campus, we have slightly over 200,000 miles on these buses. And a 40 foot bus in the, in the transit market is, is more predominant than a 35 foot bus. So I'm anxious to see what kind of resale these buses have. My guess is we're going to see some pretty uh, pretty good interest on these three and, and uh, whoever ends up purchasing them is going to get a, a pretty good bus as well. And another side note with that, uh, bus 701 was the uh, uh, cooking oil or grease bus we called it and we partnered with St. Cloud State right. with. French so right. uh, that, that's an end of an era there, so no more cooking oil here on uh, Metro bus at least for the short term. But you know, interestingly back in 2009, is that still here? 2009 or whenever we, we did this, you know, fuel prices were, you know, heading towards five dollars a gallon gas prices were the same and you know, everybody was trying these alternative uh, solutions to try to you know, mitigate some of those high fuel costs and you know it worked but it was a short-term uh, thing and you know, the gas prices are down nobody about uh, burning cooking oil in their vehicles anymore, so. uh, but anyway that's that, too that bad where's that all going then uh, interestingly, too, in that vein, um, when we were going through the pre-production pre meetings and specking those three uh, new flyer buses, we received a pretty robust sales pitch from their sales team about their electric bus uh, program. And they're, you know, everyone's excited about electric buses, and, and that seems to be, and I won't deny that that's the direction that the uh, transit industry is moving, and then even in, in the uh, private sector or, or personal sector as well. But nevertheless. Uh, you know, the, the message we were getting was the electric uh, bus bit industry is just exploding for a request. So I checked with uh, production uh, to ask, okay, what, what percentage of CNG versus diesel versus electric versus hybrid diesel have you built in the last uh, four years? And they don't have the 2018 uh, statistics complete yet, but from 2014 to 2017, um, 2,827 CNG buses were built uh, by New Flyer. Uh, 2,684 diesel buses were built, uh, 1,658 hybrid diesel buses were built, and just 266 electric buses were built. So didn't Minneapolis and St. Paul just order a whole somebody, didn't they, they just order they a whole bunch of electric ones? 125. 60-foot. Yep, 60-foot uh, uh, articulated Arte 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 buses. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, governor of California just recently mandated that by 2040, the entire state of California, all of the transit systems in California have to be 100% electric. So, and, and that's the other thing that the uh, statistic that New Flyer threw at me, you know, out west, like California, some of the you know, southern states, uh, a lot of CNG, a lot of electric interest out east, 
It's still a lot of diesel uh, and, and diesel hybrid. Uh, they've had a huge order for LA Metro that's been 100% CNG. Uh, they just got a huge order for New York uh, Metro and it's 100% diesel. So those numbers constantly fluctuate. Okay. So, so. But um, yeah, that's, I thought those were some interesting uh, statistics. So. Uh, just another quick tidbit, uh, our uniform contract uh, has expired. Uh, we've been with G&K Services uh, for several contracts for about 10, 15 years now. Uh, they were purchased by Cintas Corporation uh, back in 2017. Uh, things haven't gone as well with that acquisition, uh, at least for G&K and certainly not for Metrobus. So we're going to look at rebranding our entire uh, uniform uh, program, uh, probably the look. Um, Try to be more safety conscious, particularly on our maintenance side. With us, you know, if you've seen, we're wearing the yellow safety vests here and, and uh, in and around the grounds here at Metro Bus. Um, so, some of the problems we run into are our maintenance shirts have been discontinued. Uh, our driver shirts are, are no longer part of the mainstream with the, the striping on there. So, uh, look for a, a big change in how our drivers and, and maintenance personnel are dressed here. <coughs> That's all I have. Okay. Anything else? Well, before we close, I'd like to take a moment to recognize John Lambert for his time serving. Did you recognize him when he came in? <laughs> <laughs> I knew who he was right away. <laughs> Pictures on the wall now. <laughs> Since today is his last board meeting here, officially, St. Paul Metropolitan Transit Commission, on behalf of Metrobus, and I don't want to speak for the board, but on behalf of Metrobus, I'd like to congratulate you for your time serving the board. It was a pleasure working with you, and thank you for the work that you do for Metrobus, and also thank you for what you do in the community of St. Cloud. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you could take a picture, picture, but you know, it's coming up again. Because it doesn't have to be a good picture. Yeah, yeah. 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 you might be, yeah. you might see him back again. But your term was up, your term wouldn't have been up on this board, though. Your, I think it was. Because it was July, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It, it was June. We, June. we yeah. set up. Oh, are you doing by, by calendar year? Yeah. I think so. So you're doing by calendar year, not by your well, pretty fiscally responsible. I hate to have to put another picture up there. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep them on. <laughs> so, yeah. I haven't decided. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I haven't had a chance to talk, so. Yeah. But we might okay. keep John on, so. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, well, you can still take a picture. <laughs> 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 All right, let's take a picture. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. All right, we'll take a picture. What's your time? We just want to get as many as we can for the room circle. Yeah. Oh, is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, my yeah. term is up this year. Not this year, 2019. Are they going to reappoint you? 20. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Are you going to reappoint you? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. we gotta get that. All right. yeah. <laughs> we gotta get the tea though. Next year somehow. All right. Remember that. You got you got the tea? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen